What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I'm going to be getting very number heavy to break down what exactly is the ideal role to be chasing on the mountaintop. But first, for a quick TLDR, velocity on the mountaintop does not affect damage. However, blast radius does affect damage. So the lower your blast radius, the higher your damage. So if you get a blast radius masterwork on a god roll mountaintop, I really feel bad for you. You may have to leave it without a gold border to get optimal damage. But anyways, I wanted to say that off the top because the rest of this video will just be me showcasing the difference in launch and grenade perks to show you in excruciating detail what the most optimal roll to go for is. I wasn't going to make a video on the mountaintop, but diving into the numbers to get the most out of things is kind of what I do in Destiny. So the reason for this video was a Twitter thread from Mossy Max. He is a numbers expert in Destiny, so check him out for even more info. He knows a lot more than I do. And shout out to the person on Instagram who messaged me about his tweet, and also my clanmate TJ who showed me the graph. Again, I wasn't going to do a deep dive on this, but then I figured I owe it to the community to help them find the best god roll for mountaintop possible. So leave a like and sub on the video if you find this video helpful. I'm shooting for 50,000 subs by the final shape, so let's pump those numbers up. Anyways, now on to the details. This graph was made by Mossy and shows the damage in relation to blast radius. But if you're a dumb like me and need actual damage numbers to see what the heck this graph means in the game of Destiny, then strap in. One thing I need to mention is all testing was done on Carl with no boss spec applied to any weapon and all the recombination numbers were with recombination times 10. I also didn't have solo operative on or radiant or anything like that. These are base damage numbers. So first, let's look at the relationship between blast radius and damage. I have a mountaintop here with spike grenades, impulse amplifier, and vorpal weapon. And it has hard launch and confined launch. So hard launch takes our blast radius down to 95. And when we do that, we hit for a total of 71,277. I then put on confined launch, which takes my blast radius to 100. And we hit for 68,272. So the hard launch version hits for 4.4% more damage. Now, I have a god roll with auto loading holster and recombination, so before we look at those numbers, I want to look at base damage numbers on a different recombination roll with sticky grenades. The reason for this is so you can see how substantial the jump is with spike grenades and implosion rounds. So with hard launch, we hit for 114,662 with recombination and 57,331 at base. And then with linear compensator, we hit for 110,079 with recombination and 54,040 at base, a 4.16% difference. Okay, now let's get into the grenade perks that increase the damage even more. So with spike grenades and hard launch, we hit for 123,959 with recombination and 61,980 at base. And with countermass instead of hard launch, we hit for 118,733 with recombination and 59,367 at base. So hard launch alone is giving us a 4.4% damage buff. But then we compare that to the sticky grenade version, the hard launch with spike grenades hits for 8.1% more damage than the sticky grenades with hard launch, and a whopping 12.6% harder than the sticky grenade version with linear compensator, which is actually pretty significant. So if you can get the right grenade perk and right launch perk, then you will actually deal quite a bit more damage. But then Mossy also talked about implosion rounds and that they are slightly better than even spike grenades. So let's look at that. I was very lucky to get all these perks on the same grenade launcher, so I figured it was my duty to share the raw numbers. So with implosion rounds and counter mass, we hit for 119,421 with recombination and 59,711 at base. So this is less than the spike grenades with hard launch, but slightly more than spike with counter mass, but only 0.5% more. And then if we look at hard launch and implosion rounds, we hit for 124,004 with recombination and 62,003 at base. So interestingly, there is even less of a difference with this because hard launch and implosion rounds take the blast radius to 85 and spike is at 95, but spike direct impacts hit harder. So you gain thanks to less blast radius, but you lose a bit because of how spike grenades works. In the end, it basically cancels out, as you hit for like 23 more damage with hard launch equipped. But it is still slightly more. So let's look at the hardest hitting version with implosion rounds and hard launch and compare it to the sticky grenade version. Sticky grenades and linear compensator hits for 110,079 with recombination and 55,040 at base. And then the juiced up version with implosion rounds and hard launch hits for 124,004 with recombination and 62,003 at base. 
So the difference in damage is 12.65%, from a roll with no good launch and grenade perks to a roll with optimal launch and grenade perks. So what does all this mean? What is the god roll mountaintop? Well, if we look at d2foundry.gg, hard launch is the only launch perk that lowers our blast radius. So if you want a true god roll, you need this perk. As hard launch alone pretty much adds 4.4% more damage. Then in the grenade column, there are only four options luckily. So ideally you get spike grenades and implosion rounds. Implosion lowers the blast radius where spike grenades do more damage on direct hits. But as we saw in the video, there is a minuscule difference. It did half a percent more damage than spike grenades when counter mass was on the weapon, but a negligible percent when both hard launch and spike grenades were on the weapon. So if you don't have hard launch, then implosion rounds makes a bigger difference, but the difference is still minute. But for the absolute perfect god roll to deal the absolute most damage, you want hard launch, implosion rounds, and then whatever perks you're going for. And you do not want a blast radius masterwork. And if you are going for autoloading holster, you probably don't want a reload speed masterwork. Stability is pretty much useless, and I honestly have no idea if velocity affects anything on mountaintop, since it has micro missile and shoots super fast and straight anyways. So if I were crafting the perfect roll, I would take a handling masterwork for quick swap speed. So before we wrap the video up, I figured I'd do like a quick little god roll guide in case you were interested on really what the best roll is. So right away, I don't think you want slick draw. Um, not a very good perk and then ambitious assassin is super good on forbearance But I don't see this as an ad clearing weapon. So where with ambitious assassin on forbearance You're shooting like two and taking out loads of ads I took this into a lost sector and was trying to add clear with it with an impulse amplifier and it just wasn't It didn't feel good. The blast radius is not very good. It doesn't take out a lot of enemies at once So I see this more as like something to use on champions and majors and stuff so Impulse Amplifier is a great perk because of the reload uh, speed that it gives you, but I just, like it feels really nice, but I don't see this as like a spamming weapon. I see it for high health targets. So something like Vorpal Weapon would be really nice. Again, demo maybe because you could like get two shots off at once. So maybe you come up to a champion, you stun it, you shoot it once, throw a grenade and then shoot again, and maybe you can melt it down on something like a Starfire Protocol Warlock, but very situational. I love Demolitionist, but I don't know if I love it on this weapon. Lead from Gold's always good in PvE. Overflow, I don't think is that great, to be completely honest. Same type of thing with Ambitious Assassin. Like, yeah, you can get off two shots quick, but where this thing is good is in, like, um, like a replacement for Izanagi's Burden. So you like shoot it, then you swap to a rocket, shoot a couple shots off, swap back to mountaintop, shoot another shot. So if you're using it like that, my go-to for this is gonna be auto-loading holster. That's what I was looking for. And then I really wanted recombination. I detailed it in the video. It can do up to double damage when it's at times 10, which is really, really good. And then Vorpal Weapon is just a flat 15% buff to bosses all the time, because it's a special weapon. So. I also wanted an auto-loading Vorpal, which I was able to get. So those are the two main perks I would go for. Frenzy is also really nice, but it's not always up, but it will deal more damage to red bars. So in higher end content, that may be good. In lower end content, you don't even need the 15% damage bonus. It's just gonna kill red bars regardless. But like I said, this isn't really a weapon in my opinion that you use for red bars. So auto-loading Recom and auto-loading Vorpal are pretty much the two I would go for. Uh, Harmony, not so much. One for all. Again, it's a big damage boost if you're using it for ad clear, but that's not really the role I see for Mountaintop personally. So yeah, those are my god roll recommendations. Anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. A lot of work goes into these videos from farming tons of different roles to test, to painstakingly testing the damage numbers, and so on. Bungie, please, give us a testing area in Destiny 2, I beg of you. If you enjoy these types of in-depth breakdowns, then you will love my subclass school videos where I break down in great detail what every aspect, fragment, verb, and ability does on every subclass. ARC is coming out this week, and they've all performed very poorly, and I put a ton of work into them, so you should definitely check those out. Anyways, if you're still watching, then thanks for watching to the end. It means a lot. Take care.